On the eleventh day of Christmas, namely nineties, gave to me eleven Salem sailing, ten Queen speeches, nine Carlton's dancing, eight twenty somethings teening, seven poos of swimming, six drinks of sherry, five punches to the face, four <laughs> malicious rumors, three serenity nows, two grumpy old men, and a Xena warrior princess. Again, I'm just going to go for the applause there on that one. (laughs) Thank you. I agree. Thank you. (laughs) Uh, Well done. Welcome to Namely 90s. The podcast that takes you back to the time before smartphones, Google, and Y2K. Join your hosts as they relive the pop culture that shaped a generation and the parts that many people wish they could forget. Listen in to the conversation about how the decade defined those who spent their childhood there and how it shaped them as adults. So, turn down the grunge and dial up the internet. Let's get started. It's time for Namely 90s. Yes, you are listening to Namely 90s. Thanks for joining us. As usual, I'm Andrew. Over there, we've got Brandon. Um, you can find us online at Namely90s.com or on Twitter at Namely90s with a 90S. And uh, Brandon, did you want to introduce our guest today? Uh, sure. Today on, uh, well, like first, Happy New Year's Eve, everyone. <laughs> uh, you made it to day 11 of uh, the 12 <laughs> you days survived. of Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we've had a lot of fun guests, but um, we also have more. one more today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do we have one tomorrow? <laughs> yes. All right. Um, and uh, we... <laughs> Wow, I'm just botching this. <laughs> That's okay. today. We, today we have Ray from Not Before Coffee, um, a excellent podcast that talks about well, uh, dreams, mental health, uh, and, and the occasional uh, Disney Channel original movie or whatever's on her shelf. Uh, welcome, Ray. <laughs> yes, <Hi>. welcome. <laughs> Hi, really great to be here. Thank you. You awesome. can oh, thank me, right? you. <laughs> Great to have you. Um, can you tell our listeners a little bit about your podcast? Um, unless I just stole everything. Also, <laughs> I, I, I apologize. I didn't realize the gardeners would be outside right now. Um, if anyone hears that on my audio. No, it's uh, a bit le- It's a bit too late here for gardeners. It's, yeah. it's quarter past six. Ooh, so oh everyone's geez. gone home for the day. Thank goodness. Now, uh, my podcast is basically about everything I can do when I've had at least three cups of coffee. But to be honest, by the time I finished, by the time I get to recording in the evenings, it's about five, six, seven on a really bad day. I talk about my really weird dreams and I have a lot of them. For some reason, I remember almost every single one. I don't remember the really nice ones. <laughs> I just remember the well, ones naturally. where I, <laughs> I know, I just remember the ones where I get held at gunpoint or snakes <laughs> snither into the bath with me, that kind of stuff. Uh, <laughs> so it's great fun. I also talk about mental health, which is something that is really close to my heart because I suffer from uh, recurrent depressive disorder and ang- social anxiety disorder and numerous other disorders. In fact, my psychiatrist wrote a nice long list and said, here, just give this diagnosis to your GP. <laughs> oh, <geez>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. it, was, it was it was one of those days. But I also talk about films and books because they are the things that get me through the really difficult days when I can't can't face anything. So mm. tends to be, I've done a load of Disney com, so DCOMs, done stacks of those, including Xenon and I'm trying to think, a, a really weird one called Dadnapped. <laughs> and I've moved on to chick flicks some, and a few other things, depending on what I, essentially what I go to my shelf and go, all oh, right, I think I'll watch that today. So I talk about pretty much everything and anything that I can do when my body says, yes, you've had enough caffeine. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. The, the first, I think the first episode I, I, I listened to was um, the Xenon episode, um, which, you know, I have fond memories of watching as a kid, but then just listening to you go, go over it again, I'm like, oh yeah, it's, I guess it's, it's a, it's more um it's a very what early early 90s or it sorry was, late 90s early 2000s yeah. it uh, was 1999 product. the first one came out and it was the first ever trilogy they did 
as decoms. Oh, I didn't so, know that. So, yeah, they set the pattern with that one because I think before that we'd had Smart House and I think Life Size had been oh, the two big ones. I very much but, enjoyed Smart House. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> I I hated it, but only when I watched it. But, but Katie said no. Yeah, I, she's, she's amazing, but I think I'll watch her in anything but this. There was something about this film and I did a, actually did a review about Smart House on one of the later episodes. Actually, it might have been one of the earlier episodes, but it was one of those films that I sat there and it was, okay, so it's fine for a house to physically abuse a child. Yeah, fair <laughs> point, fair yes. point. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, See, these were all the questions I started asking. I suppose I was watching it as an adult and I'm not the audience it's intended for. That's but to true. be fair, no. I was in my 20s when it came out. Yeah. <laughs> But and, um, and what Z Zenon trilogy? I, I remember Zenon Girl of the twenty first twenty first century. Yep, Girl of the twenty first century, which is right now. Um, and then uh, <laughs> Z two the sequel. And the Z, yeah. uh, I don't I remember. Know. Z, it was Z Z three, I think, but I don't remember what the subtitle was on that one. I can't and remember a, either. A, yeah. a three quel. No, no, I, hope not. Oh, no God, I, I, I just, I, I just I wanted to get sequel in. Um, but yeah, uh, I think at that point they thought they were being clever. I, I yeah, I, I, yeah, they always think they're being clever, uh, but yet but we know the truth. Well, if, you, if you notice, Raven was in the first one, right? She wasn't in the second one, and then she was in the third one via video chat. I oh yeah. okay yes yeah. so, so I only saw the third one once but I I do remember thinking why is she not in the second one um yeah uh, it's did they were they able to get her because she was starring in a Disney Channel show at the time was was that the era the of that's so Raven I think it was but they it might have been actually before that oh. so raven started the first one but obviously when it when it came to she also did her own properties because she did the cheetah girls oh right yeah Jeez. And I think it's becoming Anna. very obvious that we didn't have the Disney Channel at my house when I was growing up because I'm just we sitting didn't, here in we didn't either. silence. Yeah, <laughs> you say that the Disney Channel didn't exist when I was a child. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, fair I, enough. I grew up in the, I was born in the 70s. So I grew up in the 80s and then the 90s came along and I was living on my own by 92. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, we were toddling around at that time. <laughs> Thank you for making me feel yeah, old. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's all I know to do. No. <laughs> yeah, usually it's our it's our reflex to to immediately make people feel old. We Thank apologize. <laughs> That's fine. Especially new uh, friends from across the pond. So, so um, can you tell us a little bit about the release schedule, where people can find you, either yep. on social or podcast i'm i'm on social i'm on twitter at need underscore three underscore mugs and you can find my podcast it's actually pretty much everywhere i've just moved platforms mm -hmm. at the beginning of december i moved to captivate and they have got sort of i think they have pink fingers in every pie because my my figures have suddenly gone up and i'm wow. on almost every single platform which is fantastic very cool. That's awesome yeah, so um, my, at the moment, my release schedule is every Thursday. I release at 6.53 a.m. because I have a funny thing about numbers. Hmm. <laughs> I have a funny thing about a lot of things, but 6.53 <laughs> is the specific time. I even have my alarm set for 6.53 in the morning. Uh, yes. That's excellent, I, yeah. I, it's, I, it's a bit of a thing I have, and I am hoping to go back to a Tuesday schedule release in the new year but it depends okay. on how things go. <laughs> All right. So, so I'm just reading the show notes here and I need to, I need to ask, I need to say a couple things. One, yep. tell me more about the Sims character that you developed. <gasps> oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. I had a bully boss. She was a nightmare. She now lives in New Zealand. Actually, I hmm. did a, every Good once in a while I do go. a quick, every <laughs> once in a while I do a quick check on Facebook. Is she still there? Good. Um, that sounds really awful, but it's true. She <laughs> made, she made my life hell. So when I got the Sims two, I was off work for 10 months, thanks to various things at work. And I would build myself a house. I would make this character's life absolute hell 
she'd have a husband that cheated on her and her children would run <laughs> oh wa- run wild and then i'd kill her character off in various colorful ways <laughs> because the sims enable you to do that without feeling really guilty so i created um i'd shut her in a room get rid of all the doors get rid of the dustbin get rid of the sink and have a cooker so she could cook loads of meals but all the plates would then pile up and flies would build up and then she'd get killed by them and oh, i would <laughs> no and then i'd put her in a um, the best ones were I'd let her catch on fire with a barbecue <laughs> and I would also drown her in the swimming pool which is really easy and mm. you essentially just put her in the pool let her dive into the pool and don't put a step ladder in there and <laughs> oh, after no. a while they get tired and they drown <laughs> oh dear this sounds like it could be a series of like short stories or novels uh, <laughs> like horror novels okay. in a way um, <laughs> well uh, that's a nice segue somehow maybe into (laughs) mental health, which I just wanted to say, um, I think it's great that you talk about that freely because it is something that has a stigma Mm -hmm. around it. And I think to deny that they exist and that they need treatment is, is a big mistake. So Mm -hmm. I appreciate you. It yeah, it is, to talk about it that. is hard. It, it's hard everywhere. And I know, especially I've said it on Twitter several times, it is, especially at this time of year, it can be really hard. And this year in general has been horrific for mental health. And especially mm-hmm. when it's mm-hmm. really hard to get help because everywhere is closed. Yeah, so they're uh, saying, oh, uh, you can have a Zoom call with a psychiatrist. It's like, that's it's, not it's actually helpful. Different. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's that distance that doesn't feel as personable and uh, allow you to be as open. And it's also yeah. quite difficult when you have that fear of other people listening in. Mm. I mean, <laughs> I talk about it freely. I've been, I've suffered from mental health issues since I was probably about 11. Mm. So I've, it's, you don't grow, you don't grow used to it, but at the same time, it's nice having a diagnosis. Mm. Mm-hmm. I just knew that I felt awful all the way through my tweens teens 20s and then finally i got a diagnosis and it's like actually that makes so much sense now i understand it and i have medication sure. and i have a lot of medication <laughs> because i also got diagnosed with diabetes so oh. yay oh my gosh uh, yeah i know you can tick two thumbs up how many boxes do you have to tick when you go to the go to new gp mm-hmm. do you suffer from this oh yes and that and that oh and my family has that but <laughs> yeah, most people just mark a line through the no column. You're, you're over here in the yes column. Oh, <laughs> I, am, I, I didn't used to be, but now it's like, okay, so oh, yes, yeah. I am in all of those. Oh, and I have anemia. So where's the box <laughs> oh, for that one? Okay. <laughs> but yeah, when you're you writing do... in your own things, that's not a good sign. <laughs> no, but at the same time, I think it's, it's something that people need to be able to feel comfortable talking about. And if you don't feel comfortable talking about it with someone online or your family, find a friend that you can trust because at the Mm. end of it, you should not be facing it alone. Yeah. And I mean, as someone that that lives alone uh, during this pandemic, that has been out of a job since February, it's been nice to to do this podcast and uh, uh, occasionally play Rocket League with uh, Andrew and his wife. Occasionally? uh, (laughs) (laughs) Oh, is he? (laughs) Yeah. That, that's my my form of therapy but um and uh yeah it's i don't know where i was going with that but um it's <laughs> we don't know either yeah it's it's I, I assume your podcast is a form of catharsis for you as well it is i mean i live alone too and i've lived alone for a considerable number of years my company is a cat who only comes near me when she wants food mm. oh. <laughs> or wants me to go to bed so she can have her supper they are the only times she likes to come near me, either that or bite me or sit oh my on gosh. my notes. I'm sitting, I work at home and she'll sit on my desk over my notebook that has got all my notes on it. So I have to pick her up and move her about they 12 that. times. That's yeah. so great. <laughs> Cats have an amazing way of showing They're affection. Like, how can I yes. inconvenience you? And they just sit on all your things that you're trying yeah. to use. Yeah. She, she really will. It's like, oh, there's a pencil here and there's some writing. And she will just plonk herself down right there and will not move. So things like my podcasting and chatting with people online and to be fair, Twitter have been a saving grace to my mental health in the mm-hmm. last Good. what nine months. <laughs> Feels like well, forever. Here's, here's another segue. <laughs> Speaking of cats, let's talk about the show that had the best cat ever on television. Oh, oh he did. 
You mean an <laughs> animatronic cat? Yeah, yeah, it was creepy. But we are we actually watched the Sabrina the Teenage Witch episode called Santa Claus from season Sabrina two Claus. episode Sabrina, Sabrina, Sabrina Claus. You know what? I just typed that and I still said it wrong. Yes, I'm not I the one screwing up today. Uh, so, I'm sorry, <laughs> Sabrina Claus, season two, episode twelve. Um and of course, the beloved Salem stars in that show. So um, really that's what we watch. We're going to talk about it. I love Salem. He's hilarious. Yeah. I love that he's so sarcastic. <laughs> yeah. Which is the side of humor that us Brits kind of appreciate. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we tend to talk in sarcasm a lot as well in our personal lives. Not so much on the <laughs> podcast. Um, but yeah. Well, I, go ahead. Yeah, true. I was just going to say. You know, so many shows, the addition of a talking animal is always like that last ditch jump the shark effort. But I feel like Sabrina pulls it off like it's a, it's a long term character that actually adds to the show. It's not just like a gag, you know. So I, I, I think Salem was was one of the better cats on TV that talked. Yeah, I, I just I just love the. Uh, I mean, as a kid, when I, I saw Salem talking, I was like, whoa, this is wrinkling my brain. And then like <laughs> Uh, Sabrina would like pick Salem up and then it would cut to a different shot. It'd be a real cat. And be yeah, a real, real cat. black cat. And, yeah. and like, how did they do that? Oh my God. Um, Mind blown. Yeah. But now I guess I understand the magic of editing a little bit better. The, um, the funny thing too is like, I we watched a show when I was growing up, mm-hmm. you know, when it was on TV. Yeah. And I don't really remember it all that well, but I still remember... Whenever the phone would ring, Salem would be like, phone. <laughs> and I still do that. I forgot like, about that. Every time I hear a phone ring, in my mind at least, and sometimes out loud, I go, phone, <laughs> until someone answers it. But that's wow. the thing. He was, kind of, he was kind of like the kid that never answered the phone. Yeah. Mm. Or, the, or the, the child that is sitting there and the doorbell goes, mom, door. <laughs> yeah. Like, or, you know, he yeah. doesn't have opposable yeah. thumbs, so we can't hold it against him. But he's a magic cat, is he not? Isn't well, yeah. he a cursed, oh, was yeah. a cursed warlock or something? Yes, that is true. Um, no, that, I I'm, do not remember that. <laughs> yeah, he, at some point they did have him transform into a human. I think it was in season five or six. Mm. And then he did something and was an immediately sentenced back into his, <laughs> <laughs> in his cat form. Classic. Um, so I, I do have, I, I have a major question, um, just thinking, cause we, uh, we watched it. It was on TGIF here in America. It, it was a block of kid friendly, family friendly shows from like eight to 10 on eight, uh, one of our major broadcasting networks, um, for the majority of the nineties. Uh, how did you first come across Sabrina? We had Nickelodeon too. Oh, because we oh. have we have we have we had a British version with American programs in it. We didn't have the same kind of TGIF and everything else as you did. So I think that it was I probably caught it when I was oh god probably babysitting for my sister's children. Mm-hmm. My her oldest is twenty three, so about the right kind of time, and I'd go over there to babysit. And I had satellite and I have an Mm. awful tendency to, as you can tell from the DCOMs, watch a lot of kids TV. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I mean, I'm watching DuckTales right now. Just going to throw that out Well, the thing is, like, it's easy to watch because you're not expecting, you know, like something that's brilliant cinematically or has an amazing story. Exactly. You know. It, but when you watch adult TV, you're like, wow, this is cheesy because sometimes it is. Uh, but I, I, you know, I was it's like surprised. a higher standard. I was, I, personally, I feel like this episode held up. Um, like, yeah, it was yes, it was it was cheesy, but it yeah. it was there was a lot packed into 21 minutes of television. There was a lot packed in, and actually, I I realized it was pretty funny. Like, yeah, I actually right. was, <laughs> that's the thing. It wasn't they weren't wasting any time. It had really good pacing, mm-hmm. and yeah, so true. many episodes of TV. I've been watching. Because obviously I've now got the, I've got Disney Plus. I have been watching, I've just finished The Wizards of Waverly Place, um, Zach and Cody, Hannah Montana, Casey Undercover. I've watched all of them. And sometimes you sit there and you're thinking, how long is this episode? Is it really only 21 minutes? Yeah. But that really had good pacing. There was something happening all the time and you understood there was kind of a moral to it. Mm-hmm. I, it was it was almost too much stuffed into that half hour. I would say, like the the C storyline with Libby the, um, and her and her uh, stepbrother. Uh, yeah, her her evil stepbrother. That like it, it almost it almost flew under the radar. Uh, I I almost didn't get that resolution where Sabrina gave Libby a 
somehow made the child good. <laughs> yeah. It was like such a passing thing. The thing where they were standing in line and he pretended he got hit. Like, yeah. I didn't even understand why they did that. And then later at the end, I was like, what? Uh, oh, oh, right. That, that little thing that they did. Yeah. yeah but then she weird. mentioned it. Didn't she talk? Wasn't oh. she talking with Harvey right at the very beginning? Yeah, and she said, right. oh, and I've got to spend all this time with my bratty little stepbrother. He's yep. awful. He blames everything on me. So they kind of tied, yeah. as you said, it was a C story. They tied all the way through. Yeah. But then they I, also had that B story of Harvey wanting every single child to get the present they deserved or wanted for right. Christmas. Which also happened. So, like, yeah. Wow. Cool magic. Uh, well, she got her. Ma- yeah. She got her magic back. So, all oh, right. The whole point was that. So the whole point of the episode is Sabrina is a classic teenager and wants uh, a bunch of stuff for uh, Christmas, but doesn't really um, think of the other aspects of of the, the holiday. entitlement generation. Well, well actually, it, no. Yeah, yeah that's, that's that's our isn't, generation. Isn't, that hang on, you're talking about your generation yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm, well, she's I'm a Gen X. <laughs> Is is Melissa Joan Hart part of our? No, she's uh, no, Gen she's X. Cool. Yeah, so, she's anyways, my generation. <laughs> yeah, but I think all all teenagers we and kids when it comes you. to Christmas are kind of entitled. Oh great! Yeah, you know what I mean? Oh jeez! I'm, so, oh, I'm, so, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is what my generation taught you. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yes. I mean, but she also ex- explained it all at one point, so um, that that helped. That's funny. Uh, so. Yeah, I, I thought that was a good, the, the fact that she was like, I want either these things or these things or just both. You know, yeah. that yeah. was pretty, pretty classic. Pretty and, and she develops egotitis. <laughs> the well, they ego- always had these very, very simple names because they understood, I think, their audience was quite young. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, although there was a line that Harvey says, and he, he was like, oh, it smells like vodka. And I was like, <laughs> how does a freshman in high school know what vodka smells like? Like that dude's not drinking, on, seriously. Yeah. Just or saying. specifically Harvey, yeah. Um, but yeah, I let's see. Um, well, I also thought I would ask, because I, I specifically picked this episode for this day, because uh, at least in America, um, Netflix is releasing the final chapter part season whatever of chilling adventures of sabrina yes um today so that's that's our tie-in um (laughs) has i know andrew's probably never seen it um (laughs) have you seen it ray uh i I have actually i the one thing i found i was quite upset about was the fact that they hadn't used salem as Mm. salem and i know i shouldn't be because the comic book that it originates from is much darker and the series is much darker. But at the same time, I missed Salem. He was, I, for me, one of the best characters in the series. Yeah, you, need a, you need a talking cat. I, I think the yeah. problem was uh, Kunin Shipka, who's the who's Sabrina on Chilling She's Adventures. allergic to cats, isn't she? Exactly, yeah. But she didn't realize that until like they were... A, well, I mean, what about stuffed animatronic bad taxidermy cats? I mean, they're, they're going <laughs> for that realism and they don't have that CGI bu- budget, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, but I, I do think it would have been like Sabrina honestly may not have been as successful as it was without the cat, which is like, true, which is unusual. S- 17 million views on average during TGIF in America. That's, wow. really? that's pretty great. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a lot. What, mm-hmm. um, yeah, uh, but it's it's just for me, it was interesting seeing the the. Um, Juxtaposition? Juxtaposition, that's the word I was looking for, uh, between the two series. Like, this one, Sabrina's just, like, willy-dilly with her magic, and uh, I for like, the mortals don't really know about it, but it, she goes through a closet to the other realm, whereas... Well, yeah, like, when she was, when she uh, conjured that uh, that baked potato, I'm like, dude, there's, like, you're just right in the middle of the uh, cafeteria. Like, no one's going to see you doing that. It was making me a little bit nervous. Right. (laughs) Yeah. She doesn't seem to have any conscious awareness of the fact that she is sometimes doing things in such a place that anybody could see her. And it's... It just shows you how, I think in that particular instance, it shows how self-centered she'd become. Mm -hmm. Right. With the (laughs) egotitis. The ego, yeah. Um, (laughs) <laughs> I, I just noticed here there's a comment about the 90s laugh track and I still don't think mm-hmm. it was as bad as the Big Bang Theory. Like that show is all like, laugh got, track. This, this felt natural. Yeah. Yeah. 
um <laughs> yeah uh also uh, the random johnny mathis uh appearance uh, that that's dating it quite a lot yeah right yeah i i don't think i actually know who that is <laughs> i know i know who he sounds like but I, I just didn't i wasn't sure who that was i googled you know? it when i watched it but i forget uh, he's well, like, some sort of lounge singer i assume um <laughs> I just love the list here of like things to talk about. Well, it's cl- just so bizarre. So Melissa Joan Hart was, she was 23 in real life in the episode. Um, and then I also wrote, I miss Clarissa explains it all. Um, <laughs> oh, that's what, that was her. That's right. Yeah. It was like, indeed. Melissa Joan Hart was like the entirety of my childhood since. Uh, right. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think who the entirety of mine was, but we didn't have, we didn't have so many imports when I was really young. Mm-hmm. So we it would, had, yeah, it would be some random show like Bottom, which we we had never heard of until uh, we started doing. This. It wasn't really appropriate for a child, <laughs> right? But right? Right? <laughs> probably not. This no, is referencing. It really wasn't appropriate for a child. <laughs> this is referencing Bottom. the previous episode that we did that we've not recorded yet. So Andrew has no idea oh. what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Rick Mail no, and Adrian I, Edmondson. Um, I mean, I I do. I, I like. Uh, what was I was gonna say. I, I don't really know a lot of of British television or or movies. Um, Doctor Who, so, Top Gear. Uh, yeah, I don't know a ton. I'm just saying. Like, I know of Doctor Who, but uh, right. my, no, I'm, my, I'm saying that's what I watch. Yeah, if you oh, want to gotcha. watch something really good, watch Spaced. Oh, I loved space. Yeah. Simon Pegg. Edgar Wright. Oh, check it out. Yeah. Edgar yeah, Wright did it. Any of their so. stuff, obviously, is, yeah. is you know, ridiculously first, good. It was the first project I think they worked on together. Mm. Edgar Wright, Nick it Frost, was, and Simon Pegg. Yeah, pre Shaun of the Dead. Sorry, Andrew, I cut you off. No, that's fine. I was just going to say that, that that whole franchise is excellent. For sure. So This is very uh, much fandom focused. Yeah. yeah. So he's a comic book creator, comic book uh, illustrator and has an obsession with Lara Croft and Buffy. Oh, oh that's right. Buffy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, about Buffy. I just, I just finished my rewatch. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, and I think it's on Netflix in the States. Uh, also, uh, can, so we, we've glossed over the fact that, um, Sabrina went out to cure her ego Titus by, um, talking to Bob, and Bob is what the other realm calls Santa Claus. Um, <laughs> yeah. And it's just John Ratzenberger from, <laughs> yeah, from Cheers, Cheers, Cheers or yeah. Ham from Toy Story or many other things. Yeah. Um, and so I got to say, um, I was watching, uh, for some reason, I was watching very closely. <clears throat> and uh, <laughs> so at, during the montage where they're trying to cure her um, egotitis, uh, it like it's snowing and she's outside in a skirt like uh, and then when they're building a snowman when when Bob falls she somehow is magically changed into pants and then she brings him home and she's magically back in her skirt again but that's the thing that with you when you have a show that has magic in it you can explain any inconsistency with magic yeah. it's perfect uh, but usually they do the little uh, the the finger point and the the swirl to show oh, on the cheesy screen. sound effect yeah. yeah yeah but maybe bob doesn't need to do that oh that's true uh, he wasn't wearing the skirt though no <laughs> but he could have magic know. yeah he could have magic he could have magic her skirt that's and true. her trousers but why why wouldn't they have just done this the entire <laughs> e- episode like <laughs> I feel like yeah. wardrobe halfway through realized, oh, um, we can't Too have her yeah, on her knees in the snow in a skirt, um, but we're not going to fix anything else, uh, um, which you I guess mean there is, was stuff to fix. Well, uh, just the, the, <laughs> the, 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 the inconsistencies. Um, uh, the, I, I never really got the joke like as a kid that it was a vacuum cleaner instead of a broom because they're both right. for cleaning. I had completely <laughs> forgotten about that. She, uh, flying vacuum cleaner. And it wasn't oh, her, was, wasn't sorry, her train, her training wheels almost. Oh uh, yeah. That's broom. Right. Yep. Yeah. That sounds familiar actually oh, now. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was one more inconsistency. Uh, she goes to the other realm through the closet, but when she returns, she walks through the front door. Just saying, just saying. <laughs> Yeah, true. Uh, no, no, they sent her. I thought they sent her to the. Oh, you're right. Okay, no, yeah, I, I, I stand corrected. 
Um, well, when she went to see the um, psychiatrist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I did think that was funny when the psychiatrist just handed her the bill at the end and it was pretty much accurate as far as the price goes. <laughs> oh, actually, uh, even better. Just uh, so I haven't seen this episode since I was a kid, but that really does tie in with uh, your, your podcast, having gone to see in other uh, worlds. I did like though, when the psychiatrist said, you're suffering from egotitis. And she's like, you're the one with all your degrees up on the wall. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was <laughs> pretty good. Yeah. And then... Oh, let's speak with your inner child. <laughs> oh, yeah, the bratty. Yeah. yeah. Bratty girl. Or so spoiled she, brat. Yes. So she was, it wasn't so much her being the classic teen as her somehow reverting to her bratty five year old <clears throat> self, maybe. Yeah. Or never having fully grown up or something. Whatever she to the holiday. When she lost her parents, maybe. I, 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 I went big brain on that. <laughs> well, her parents aren't dead. Oh, really? In what? Sabrina, the um, adventures of Sabrina on mm. on Netflix, her parents are dead. Yeah. Uh, but adventures. in Sabrina the Teenage Witch, her mum's an archaeologist and uh, her dad's in the other realm. Oh, because it was too dark to just say her parents are dead. This was yeah. pre, pre <laughs> Harry Potter. Uh, Not that much pre Harry Potter, though. That's, that's true. true. It was just lighthearted, you know. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a dark show. It wasn't supposed I, to be. It was. A, a, I wrote down. It was some wholesome goodness. Um, yeah, yeah. There was nothing in that episode that was like that aged poorly. Where you were like, "Ooh, I wouldn't have said that." You know, it, it, was, it true. was pretty good. Um, it's almost like they almost they forward. They were future proofing a mm -hmm. lot of stuff when they made it. I know that, isn't it? Bayside. So Saved by the Bell has recently come back. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, and, oh, Andrew yeah, has and many thoughts on. And weren't there some <sighs> things they were saying were massively problematic about the original series? Because I remember seeing some memes and things. Oh. I haven't seen Saved by the Bell, the remake, but the uh, reboot. But well, I saw the original. In one episode, they kept referencing Selena Gomez's kidney transplant this is almost the reboot, as a joke. Yes. And it was yeah. like, <laughs> what? Why, why are we, I, I what? know what you're talking about in the original series. Like, Zach Morris is super rapey. Um, and, Just a bit. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> uh, you know, they. they uh, his timeout function allows him to just like be super creepy with the girls. Um, oh. And uh, <laughs> it, I, I don't have time to go into everything, but if you, if you are looking for a good laugh, but also a giant cringe and slight trigger, um, there's a <laughs> series called Zach Morris's trash. It's on YouTube and I think on Amazon and they just kind of, they go over an episode of Saved by the Bell and recount every way that Zach Morris is a terrible, terrible person. I predict that to be a very oh. short-lived reboot, by the way. It's just not. Well, I don't think Pe Peacock's going to survive. Hasn't he become a governor or something or a mayor or, or yeah, he, something like that? Yeah, he's the governor that. of California at the, uh, in the reboot. I haven't yeah, watched so it yet. Yeah, so it kind but. of ties in with his creepy... Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've become a politician. <laughs> uh, yeah, but Zach and, and Kelly. Kelly. <laughs> I'm sorry. American politics are the cornerstone of, of honesty and integrity. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, said no one ever. <laughs> yeah, anyway. that made me choke just a little bit. <laughs> and I'm, hey, I'm sarcasm! Living, I'm I living sarcasm. in the UK. <laughs> Uh, speaking of funny. choking a little bit, um, one of my <laughs> final notes for the episode was, uh, I don't remember the context of this, but I have written down kielbasa and sauerkraut. Yes. Kielbasa and menudo and haggis. No. Um, well, the joke was that he was eating all the different cuisines of the different places they visited. Uh, and they did like a several jokes on him having gastrointestinal distress. Yeah, <laughs> because he'd been eating what was whatever was left out for Father Christmas. However, in Scotland, as far as I know, they still leave out biscuits and whiskey. So, uh, oh, Ooh. you should. You I know should that tell that's what my sister. That, my sister leaves um, a small glass of whiskey and some biscuits. I make them on Christmas Eve. So I know that yeah, we like, don't we don't leave uh, out anything traditionally regional. No, uh, no just a plate Dodgers of kielbasa or... with some cabbage mm -hmm. and a uh, you know a large beer or something. No, that would be. Ugh. I don't think so. I mean, that uh, sounds good. That at would be, times, that would be really bad night. for reindeer. Ooh, yeah, and then you're <laughs> in the wake. Wow. Yeah, Ugh. exactly. Oh. <laughs> um, there you go. Well. We just grossed you out. <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, that's good. So did we do it? Is that is that an episode? I think we I You're think the we timer did. man today. Uh yeah, we are at thirty three minutes here. All right. Uh, that's well, a pretty I, convincing English accent. Thank you. No, it's terrible. Terrible. The only person I know the only English accents I know are from like Top uh, Gear. those shows. You know, yeah, I watch a lot of Top Gear, which I know uh, um are you a Jeremy Clarkson yes or no person? Yes. <laughs> Yes, thank goodness. I was going to say, because I know he's kind of like, oh, Jeremy Clarkson, is, but I he's think he's Marmite. Mm, oh, yeah. A lot of he's people. Mar- are, he's Marmite. I'm it. a Marmite. I love Marmite. But no, I like Jeremy he Clarkson. He does not future proof the things he says. No, <laughs> no he no. doesn't. But then he's an old school journalist for starters. Some people can get away with it. It's weird who can get away with it and who can't. He gets away I with don't... it far more than Pierce Morgan does. Ugh. Yes, but he also doesn't. <laughs> Well, I assume he also doesn't uh, send um, Ill- unsolicited dick pics to people. Was that Meanwhile, in this country, you can write something on Twitter and have your whole career ruined, but then you can still be president. So that's really confusing. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I'm not going to touch that one with a barge pole because I think our Brit- I think British politics are just as screwy at the moment. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, born of the same, oh, come uh, on. We're head- from the same cloth. <laughs> We're heading to Brexit in three weeks, oh, yeah. and they still haven't negotiated oh, wow. deals. So. Uh, we'll figure it I out mean, when we get there. It's been a long road at this point. <laughs> For, it's, it's been nearly five years, so yeah. they should have done something by now. But yeah, so I can't well, comment on American politics while that's our... That's too funny. <laughs> Brexit, border wall. Um, well, we're going to have our two inaugurations, you know. That that actually happened one time, I think. You're going to have what? Your, his- uh, I, I predict we're having two inaugurations for the uh, happening simultaneously at different locations. Is one of them going to be the pretend one? Here's your pretend crown. <laughs> yeah, the the yeah. make believe well, one. One, one yeah. will be yeah. at Trump Tower. The other one will <laughs> actually be at the White House. Uh, we'll see. We're just figuring out the whole inauguration thing on the day of, just like the Brexit yeah. thing. We'll do it live. Yeah. The only, yeah. The only difference, happens. the only difference between your inauguration and Brexit is that Brexit is we can't come back from it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's That's been fair. five years, almost five years in the making, and it affects the price of every single thing that comes into sure. this country, mm-hmm. including the things that I do for my job. Wow. wow. Well, I, work for well, a, I work for a car company. <laughs> oh. Uh, <laughs> and we don't make cars in the UK anymore. No. They, wait, it's all... But what about all the <laughs> random cars like BMW and... Um, that, those are German they're uh, German. That's fair. Vauxhall yeah. is and they're probably French. not even built in Germany anymore. Vauxhall, they are built in Germany. <laughs> oh, really? BMW, BMW is built in Germany and France and Croatia. Lotus? Lotus is probably one of the only British companies left. However, okay. it's actually owned right. by a Chinese company oh. and they well, ship like, a lot of the stuff over from China. Yeah. Wow. That's the thing that happens in the US. They build they build them here, but I feel like a lot of the parts come from abroad. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like I think Cheaper. a couple of the Jeeps are built in Italy. Huh. Right, cuz it's uh, Chrysler is part of the Fiat group or it yeah. was absorbed by them. So It was indeed. Uh, I just bought a Volkswagen. I feel like that's still built in uh well, maybe German parts in America, but uh, Yeah. Huh. Well, Gem, well, Volkswagen own Audi and Porsche. And, mm-hmm. Yep. And Skoda. It's the poor man's Audi, as I. It's not that poor, but. Uh, well, no, I was like, going to say VWs are quite expensive. They, but to yeah, be fair, say, they, it's, they've actually got a better reliability rating than VW, than Audi, though. It was. It's one of those huh. dealers. It's like we have the uh, the KFC A and W hybrid restaurant. <laughs> it was the Audi and Volkswagen hybrid dealer. I, and I walked what, into the Volkswagen side. You say that if you want a reliable car, a really reliable car that's not going to break down on you and is going to be massively cheap to repair, Mazda or Lexus. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep, I've, I've I missed the mark. I have a Honda. <laughs> Honda's actually well, Honda's, yeah. Honda's third on the reliability list globally. My my last. You can't tell what well, I've been writing today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My, my my last Honda lasted twenty years. It was that thing lasted yeah. forever. Mm-hmm. Still Hondas going. are really good. My mum had a Datsun, which mm. is now called Nissan over here for fifteen years. Uh, yeah, we had a, a nineteen eighty nine Honda Civic. I I mm-hmm. learned how to drive that when I became of age. I mean, it was just, and that thing lasted forever. You just put miles on those things until, yeah. until, until they, they fall, fall apart. apart. Yeah. Basically. So, well, there are anyway. some good cars. And that's our top gear segment for the week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> join us for fifth gear, uh, after this show. No, um, you do realize fifth gear is actually a program over here. 
Yes, mm-hmm. uh, we, we 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 watched. We may have watched. We allegedly watched some rips of Top Gear before yeah. they made it. Over Might here. have. <laughs> what you mean? Yeah, I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> um. All right. Well, that's it for this holiday edition of Navy Nineties. Thank you to Ray from Not Before yes, Podcast. Or, well, not Before Podcast. Not Before. I did screw up this time. No. <laughs> Thank you to Ray from Not Before Coffee, uh, the podcast. Po- wow. Thank okay. you to Ray from Not Before Coffee. <laughs> for coming on <laughs> uh let listeners know how to check out your podcast okay well you can find me at www.notbeforecoffee.co.uk because i stalked the domain host until i found it awesome. Lit- literally stalked them and obviously i'm on twitter at need underscore three underscore mugs and my episodes come out on thursday mornings at six fifty three at the moment possibly moving to tuesdays in the new year all right cool. and <laughs> as always you could find us on twitter at namely 90s for the 90s or find our personal accounts at b Schwitty and at namely andrew and wish us a merry happy you can also contact us through our website namely 90s.com please subscribe to us on apple Podcasts, stitcher google play spotify youtube archie's comics deezer tune in iheart radio <laughs> and wherever you get your podcasts at i'm brandon that's andrew thank you one final time thank you so much ray yeah, for not you. before coffee it's my and pleasure <laughs> We'll catch you. Well, everyone listening, we'll catch you tomorrow for our final episode of the 12 Days of Christmas Specials. We have a special guest coming tomorrow. Teaser. And a happy new year, everyone. Yeah. Yes. Happy 2021. It has to be better. Yes. Cheers. <laughs> yeah. Right? Finally. Empirically. Wow. <laughs> <laughs>